here to today's video where I will be sharing everything I packed for myself and for my baby in our hospital bags for labor and delivery. I'll be sharing everything that I packed as well as what I actually used. If you're new around here, my name is Laura and I share all kinds of homemaking and motherhood videos here on my YouTube channel. I love to share a little bit of everything from cooking, recipes, baking, sourdough, cleaning motivation, decluttering motivation, as well as videos like this one that are hopefully helpful information when it comes to babies and motherhood. I'm all about keeping it real here on my channel and combining beauty in the mundane with authenticity instead of just showcasing polished perfection. So if that sounds appealing to you, if you want to be part of a community centered on genuine, genuine, genuineness, genuine, genuineness, then I would be so grateful if you would subscribe and join the journey. I'm also an artist and sell art prints as well as educational products geared towards children and moms and home decor and I've recently added new items to my shop. I can leave the link to that down in the description box if you are interested in seeing what I currently have for sale. I am a first time mom and even though my son is about eight months now, I hadn't started my YouTube channel yet when he was born, when I was pregnant with him and throughout that journey. So I want to go back and kind of cover some material from those days. I'm really thankful that I kept a journal throughout my entire pregnancy and postpartum experience. And this was also like a journal. I did journal entries, but I also had so many lists in this journal. And I did record everything that I brought to the hospital. And that would also be a tip that I would encourage you to do if you are pregnant or expecting is to keep a journal like this because I'm so thankful I did. It has so much information that I know I would definitely refer back to in a future pregnancy. This is the list that I had when I was preparing my hospital bag. Now, when I was actually going through the process of packing my hospital bag, I was really tempted to buy a nice uh, like weekender bag or hospital bag, but truthfully, I couldn't justify spending the money. So I want to encourage you, use what you have. That's what I ended up doing and I'm so grateful I did because I really didn't need to buy an expensive hospital bag just because it was nice or nice looking. It just wasn't necessary. I ended up just using like an old duffel bag that I had. It wasn't the prettiest thing in the world, but it definitely did the job. All right, let's start with my toiletry bag. So of the things that I actually used in my toiletry bag, that would be toothpaste, a toothbrush, face wash, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, a brush, deodorant, and chapstick. I love having these little travel size containers. I have my labeler that I got from Amazon. I can link down below. I just use that to label these little bottles. And another tip I have when it comes to packing, especially toiletry items, is to go ahead when you're packing your hospital bag, I think I packed mine at 36 weeks, is to just get duplicates of something. So for example, I have a packed toothbrush. It wasn't my everyday toothbrush that I actually kept in my bathroom. I went ahead and purchased a different one so that I could go ahead and pack it. And that way, when it was time to go to the hospital, I didn't need to be running around trying to find all these last minute things to put in my bag because it was already there. And then other things like body wash. I think on my original list, I had put razor. I didn't shave my legs at the hospital. That just wasn't something I was thinking about. I had also added Q-tips and I didn't use Q-tips. Like you can go a day or two without cleaning your ears, I think. And also moisturizer I just didn't use. And it was really important to me that I pack my makeup because I knew that once I had my baby, I would want to get ready or like the next morning when we were being discharged. I definitely wanted to have my makeup just with me in case I wanted to get ready. So I just packed things. Um, again, I did have duplicates in here. Like I just kind of waited for a lot of my makeup supplies to kind of be on their last, uh, their last thread. So like my foundation, I was running out. So I just went ahead and put it in this makeup bag and got a new one to keep at home. So I think I did the same thing with like my mascara and blush. I actually don't even think I packed blush. It was just like foundation, powder, and mascara that I packed, as well as, again, hair ties, 
makeup wipes or like makeup remover pads. And I think I put perfume on my list, but I didn't end up using perfume. But of course, you know yourself, if you will want more makeup, then definitely bring more. I just knew I would at least just want a little bit to have for after baby was born. I also added headband to my hospital list, but I don't even know why. I think I probably saw it on someone else's list somewhere. I never wear headbands, and I thought for some reason maybe I would want to when I was in labor, but I didn't. I just brought a hair tie, I had maybe a backup one, and I think I just put my hair in a ponytail or like a bun or a braid. There was no need to have a headband. I did also have a hospital gown that I brought was so thankful that I did and would definitely bring it again for a future baby. This is just one that I got on Amazon. I'm really glad that I got black. This material was so comfortable. It's just stretchy and really lightweight. So this is the front and it has like the nursing snaps all down the front as well as snaps all down. The so since I had this as well as another one that I got which I would definitely recommend having two, even though that might sound a little bit excessive because when I wanted to change into my own hospital gown instead of the hospital ones, they asked if I had another one to change into afterwards and I did, thankfully. This one is more like a nightgown, I guess, but it just completely buttons all the way down and then has this nice little lace detail on the bottom. I will link these as well as everything else that I mention as much as I can down in the description box. I did bring a towel which was helpful I used when I showered and then I also brought my own pillow which again was a plus. I think it's just nice to have some of those things that are from home that smell familiar when you're in a hospital room. I also had socks on my list like cozy socks. I never wore socks. I think I was just barefoot the whole time. I did bring a blanket and I was thankful that I did. I don't remember being cold, but I remember just bouncing on the ball a lot in early labor and just having that blanket was familiar. It was one that I used at home all the time. And so that was just a comforting thing. I think having those tactile, like sensory comfort things, almost like you think about a kid having a stuffed animal it's comforting and so that was important for me. I thought maybe I would use my journal while I was there so I brought this journal as well as pens. I didn't end up using any of that. I wasn't in the mood for journaling. I did bring my AirPods and I was really really glad that I did because listening to music was really helpful and just very calming. I had pre-made worship playlists which would be another tip is to go ahead and make playlists that will be helpful songs that you think you'll want to be listening to during labor and delivery. I made kind of a calm playlist which I listened to a lot more. It was I think exclusively worship music and then I also had a I think I called it my hype labor playlist which was more like upbeat music. I didn't use that I don't think at all because I just wasn't in the mood for it, but I know some other moms who really want that like very intense, upbeat, exciting music. So you know yourself, but having playlists is really helpful to just have that set, even to be listening to before. Like I would play that worship playlist when I was driving around, when I was just reading at home or things like that. And it was just helpful to then have those same songs playing while we were preparing to bring our baby into the world. Obviously you'll want your phone, charger, and we brought our laptop, which was nice because we did end up um, watching a movie or like half of a movie while we were just kind of waiting around in early labor. That was a nice distraction. And then of course you'll want your ID and I brought my purse, glad that I did that. The birth plan, I didn't need to bring my birth plan because my hospital had a copy of it already, but I did bring it just in case. Snacks are of course a really good thing to have, more lighter, think like light and refreshing. So like orange slices or apple slices, a little bit of sugar is helpful, yogurt, things like that, things that aren't like super heavy. So I brought some of those. I think we also brought trail mix, which was great. Having snacks also for your husband or your birth team, whoever is with you, is great because my husband was really hungry throughout the day. And so having like granola bars, things like that, were things that he could also make use of. I brought my own water bottle. This was something that was really important to me while I was thinking about packing my hospital bag, was having a water bottle that was my own and that had ice. I'm sure in hindsight, the hospital definitely probably had ice, 
but when we were leaving for the hospital, I just filled up my water bottle with ice. I really like this one because it keeps it cool. I think it's a Hydro Peak one. And then I was able to just add water at the hospital. It was nice and cold. Also having some other beverages like coconut water, things with electrolytes, or even a little bit of sugar. These are some of my favorites and ones that I used in all throughout my pregnancy. They're so refreshing. They're made with coconut water and they have electrolytes as well as vitamins and they're sweetened with stevia. They taste amazing. And so I had a couple of these that I actually had put in the freezer weeks before going to the hospital. So they were frozen. That way when we were heading out the door, I could just grab them and they would start to of course melt while we were at the hospital and they would be really, really cold and refreshing. I also had combs on my list. I had heard that combs were really helpful in labor. I didn't use them at all. I also brought my Bible. I had um, printed out all of these affirmations in this journal and I used these a lot. So it's just different verses, specific things that would be helpful to me. I used them a little bit, but not as much as I thought it would, but definitely a still a helpful thing, especially in the end of pregnancy. It was a really, just a sweet practice to go through and think about scripture or affirmations that would be helpful to me. And those were definitely playing in my mind and I was meditating on them leading up to our birth. I thought for sure I would want to labor with the peanut ball and I did, but the hospital had one. So I did bring ours, but we didn't end up using it. Our exercise ball we also brought, and I'm glad I did because even though the hospital had exercise balls, they were all really small and I started off using one of them, but my knees were like up to my <laughs> chin it felt like. I am a bit on the taller side of 5'8", and so I was glad that we brought my birth ball, which was just a little bit more conducive to my height. And then as far as clothing, we were not in the hospital very long. We were in the hospital for I guess 48 hours we were in the hospital. I did not use all the clothes that I packed mainly because I was in my hospital gown for the whole day and then I was in my other gown for that whole night and then I really just needed one change of clothes for coming home the next day. So I think I just wore these uh, joggers which are so comfortable. I got these from, they're from Time Maternity I wore these so much in our my late pregnancy and then postpartum, they were so, so comfy. So I think the main thing is to just bring clothing that will be comfortable, more loose clothing. If I were to do it again, I think I would just bring like two outfits. So like maybe two shirts, two pants, and then a nursing bra. I think I brought two nursing bras. I only used one of them. These flip flops I got for a couple bucks because I had seen these on a list to wear in the shower at the hospital. I did wear them in the shower. I don't really know if it's necessary, but I have them now, so I would take them again. All right, now getting into things that were helpful for after baby was here. I cannot for the life of me <laughs> know why I put toilet paper on my hospital packing list. Like I thought the hospital didn't have toilet paper or something. I think what it was is someone had mentioned the toilet paper at the hospital is not the softest, so they preferred their own toilet paper. I didn't really notice the difference, so <laughs> maybe that's just me, I don't know. But some things that were helpful were these Tux cleansing pads. These were really helpful at the hospital as well as at home postpartum. They're made with witch hazel. They're just really um, cooling for after you've just had a baby. Adult diapers. I did bring my own, which I didn't end up using because the hospital provides you with them. Same thing with these like Frida, Frida Mom. They're like cool therapy. I wouldn't, I don't think I would buy these again. I definitely preferred the Tux as well as this spray from Earth Ma. This one was really helpful. I used it for a long time and was nice to have at the hospital. At the hospital, they do give you one of these peri bottles, but I had read that they're not the best and it's true. I was glad that I had this one from Frida Mom. I had bought a couple different butters like this one and I didn't end up using it at all. If I were to go back, I would just wait if I thought that it was something that would be helpful after the fact, then I would just get it on Amazon and have it the next day or just ask my husband to go grab it at the drugstore. There was no need to have it before I even knew that I would need it. 
because as it turns out, I just didn't use it at all. So looking at my list, I believe that's everything that I've covered for myself. So for everything, I brought my baby. I was able to pack it all in our diaper bag. Now, of the things that I actually use, they gave us a hospital hat, which was so sweet. And that's all that he wore while we were at the hospital. He didn't wear a onesies at all. He only wore a sleeper. We did use like a sleep swaddle. Lanolin we did use. Okay, here's another tip for you. Lanolin is helpful to put on your newborn baby's bum soon after they were born is when we did it. It's a natural, um, almost like a sticky honey texture. And it really helps when they have that first meconium poop to clean it up really, really easily. So we did that and when it happened, it was so easy to clean up. The hospital provided diapers, but we had our own that we used as well as our wipes we used. Nail file, we did not use. Filing my baby's nails just wasn't going on in my head while we were at the hospital. Swaddles, we didn't really swaddle him. He just had his like swaddle wrap thing for sleeping. His name announcement sign that I made, we didn't use at the hospital. I just took those photos and we were back home. We did use our portable sound machine. Pacifier, I didn't actually give him a pacifier until he was more like three or four weeks old but I brought one just in case, but we didn't use it. A blanket we used just to keep him nice and cozy, warm. And then of course his going home outfit. The car seat cover we didn't use when we were leaving the hospital. Mittens I also didn't use because his sleepers had those little hand covers. Also again, didn't put him in socks that I brought because he was in a sleeper and he had little feet covers. We didn't give him a bath. I also, I don't know if I mentioned, I put soap and lotion for first bath. We didn't give him a bath until he was like two weeks old, so we didn't need those. And I already mentioned our sleep sacks. Well, that covers everything. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, let me know in a comment down below. And I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.